Hey, what is going on everybody? Mike from Mike's Custom Airbrush here and Iacona Studios and we're jumping into this video today. We have a custom project with this clone trooper helmet we're gonna be customizing. Um, I went over all my materials and things that I'm gonna be doing in the last video we shot. So if you haven't seen that yet, go back and watch that first. I go over all my materials and things like, like that. Um, and just to give you a quick view, um, here's a little bit of a reference of what the customer brought me, just showing that they don't want anything traditional. So we're gonna kind of use this for reference, but we're gonna kind of do our own thing too. So just to give you a quick heads up on that. Um, and yeah, without any further ado, we're gonna get right in the painting. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is kind of base coat this whole thing in a few different colors um, and just get some uh, base on it. And then we'll start adding some textures. Um, then we'll start adding some shadows and details and maybe kind of using our judgment as we go along, but um, start tightening up as we go. And then we have a few logos we're gonna um, kind of superimpose on there. So so yeah, so we'll, we'll start off with some base coat. So here we go. good example of how I crinkled up this paper and you see all the different crinkles in here so I loaded up that with that paint and I'm basically just going to try to do some texture on here um, and I'll be overlapping but it's real simple load that up maybe give a dab or two and I'm just turning that as I go you know I'm not so much not staying in the same position all the time because I don't want those same crinkles looking pattern but I'm kind of just using that for texture and then it actually might reactivate some of the paint on here so it might take it away but you see as you go around a little bit how you're getting those textures in there. I'm just gonna constantly keep building up the depth for this. You can see it there in the first color we did, all that kind of marbleized texture in there. So that's a good little trick of trade. People use this for a lot of things. And you can use this for a lot, a lot of different stuff. If you're painting on motorcycle tanks, this is a great effect for marbleizing. They have some pearls and candies you can use that really you get that good effect. But um, the plastic bag trick is just one of those things that um, you could always use for texture. And before you touch, you know, your, your project, you know, you could always do a couple samples on some plain paper to make sure it's got your desired effect. But it's pretty cool.
people stippling. People um, might get a little bit of a paint and put it on the end of a toothbrush and kind of rub their hand on it and flick it off, or even a paintbrush. You'll have to keep reloading, but a little trick with the airbrush is uh, we take a clothespin here, we lay that tip of the airbrush down on the clothespin, and when we're real close to the edge, that paint's gonna build up and shoot off in small speckles. If I move back further, that means more paint's gonna build up on there, therefore more paint, bigger speckles. So when I want a real fine spray, I'll move up. When I want a little bit bigger dots, I'll move back. I basically start letting paint just turn my arm on, start pulling back, and then you'll see the work on this area right here. And you see how that just spritz off like that. So it's kind of like a nice controlled accident. And as you get up close, you can see those small speckles against that really cool magenta. Um, that's a great effect. People use this for like stone effects. Again, we're using textures here. So um, just like the bag effect, which gave you more of those crinkles, this gives you more of a fine dot. Uh, you saw me with those freehand shields earlier, moving those around a little bit. So um, again, another little uh, trick of the trade there to help you guys with your painting. Um, and um, hopefully that helps you. All right guys, so I got this final mask here and you notice obviously since I'm not working with a perfect flat surface, I'm gonna be able to have all these kinks in here. Um, you're gonna see what I'm gonna use this stencil for, but um, I still have to, once I peel that off, go back and kind of take my time and reposition these things, make sure they're close. You see how I'm kind of pushing it in there real lightly and going off the contour of the helmet. Pushing it in those creases and then coming down. So that's a perfect example. So when I take everything off, you see how I have gaps like here, but I'm just gonna take that few minutes, go ahead and reposition everything so it's nice and tight, nice and tight. Okay guys, so um, one quick note. I mentioned how I used the vinyl cutter to cut out this graphic of the logo and um, put that on there and sized it up. But one thing that I do all the time when it doesn't come to intricate things is I'll just make my own. Not everybody has access to a vinyl cutter, so when I'm doing a lot of my motorcycle art or things where I'm really concerned with placement and size, I'll literally just get a blank sheet of computer paper. I'll draw whatever it is I want on there. I'm using this skull as an example. Um, and then you'll see I sprayed over it. And then I literally will just cut those lines out with an X-Acto knife, cut that out with scissors and X-Acto knife, and I'll make my own stencils. And I can reuse these over and over. So technically, if you didn't have access to a vinyl cutter, you could have print this out on your um, um, home printer, um, size it up accordingly, even if you didn't freehand draw it, and you could come around here and cut these things out, and then you could kind of just put a little piece of tape on the back of that, place it where you needed to go, and you could do the, technically the same thing. Now, I will say, the vinyl's gonna stick really crisp and clean around there, where your paper stencil comes to flare, but again, you, you know, you get a little paint on your fingers, you're holding around. The point is I wanted to show you another access to making your own stencils to get crisp edges if you don't own a vinyl cutter. So that's another cool trick of the trade.
Okay guys, here we go. We're all set, finished product. We completed everything and check it out. I think it came out pretty cool. We got some really vi vibrant colors in there. I like the contrast with the blue. The logos came out really sick. I just really love the different textures. Um, definitely really unique for a Star Wars type uh, theme and the colors, but I like I, I really enjoyed doing something different on here, so I, I think it came out great. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to go out back and watch that first vid, uh, one explaining the um, supplies that I was using. And then um, any questions, guys, hit me up uh, in the comments. Any questions, um, maybe something you would like to see in further videos. Um, definitely check out other social medias on Instagram and things like that. But um, yeah, look at that logo on there, guys. Awesome. Um, I think it was cool that we were able to use a bunch of different techniques to show you guys texture on this uh, helmet. So I hope this video was helpful and um, I'll be sure to catch you guys on the next one. So stay tuned.